Alrighty besties, welcome back and in this video I'm going to talk to you guys about some random things. The first thing is how to change to an absolute path. So you know before we learn the command cd we can change the directory and we can basically move depending on where we are. So right now inside Bucky there's a directory inside here called desktop so we can do that. Well this is actually a relative path. The path to desktop is relative to wherever you are but you can also change the directory to an absolute path. So say that you wanna to go to some directory in your hard drive and you don't wanna type cd dot dot, cd dot dot to get there. What you can do is you can actually go cd and start typing in the absolute path. So I'm gonna write c, which means my hard drive, program files. Now before I even continue, I wanna bring up this point. So take note of what Windows did. So usually whenever we use tab auto completion what it does is it just pops in the directory's name but now what it did is it popped in the name with uh, double quotes around it why did it do that well with windows whenever you make a directory you can actually have a space in your directory name so a lot of the times whenever you're using the command line what you do is you write in something like dir slash a in this space actually means okay this is the command and then I'm gonna separate it with a space and then give you some options. Or maybe you're changing to the desktop, so you're gonna write the command name, space, and then you know another part of the command, in other words, the folder you wanna move into. However, if you just do this, so for example, cd, c, and there's a space in your directory name, then if you don't use those double quotes, then what your command line is going to think is that this isn't one directory's name. You just want to change your directory into C program and then files is actually like some weird option or something. So anytime you have a directory's name or a path with a space in it, you need to surround it with double quotes and that's your way of telling Windows, hey, this is one single path. So from here, let me just go to Wireshark and then it's going to move me to Wireshark. So again, that is how you use absolute pass. And now let me clear this because I want to show you guys this. So if I just go dir, then I'll just show you guys this real quick. All right. So inside here, I have an executable named T Shark. Now, this tutorial isn't about T Shark. I just knew that this was one executable that I can show you guys real quick. What it does isn't really important, but you know how I said that whenever you type the name of a file, like tshark.exe, then what it's going to do is it's going to open it in the default program. So if you were to do this with image, it would open it in your image window. If you were to do it with a text file, it would open it in notepad. However, what you can do is you can actually just type in the name of the executable and it's going to go ahead and start running whatever the program does. So if you ever want to stop it, you can hold down control and hit C. But again, I just want to point out that you can run an executable by typing the name of the executable. All right, that is interesting, I guess, but why do we really care about that? Because wouldn't it be cool if you could actually run that executable from anywhere on your computer? So let's say that you wanted to go to um, users, Bucky, all right, so let's say that we were in Bucky right now and we wanted to run that T Shark program or some kind of executable that, I don't know, maybe we made in C or whatever. Well, instead of having to go all the way back to Wireshark, there is actually a way that we can run that T Shark program right from here. Now, that brings up this right here. If you type in path and hit enter, what this is going to do is it's going to give you Windows Path. So, what is Windows Path? Basically, whenever you type the name of a program, holy crap, can't type, like T Shark, what Windows is going to do is it's going to first look through your current directory and it's going to say, um, nope, I can't find that. So if it doesn't find it, it's just going to freak out. However, what you can do is you can actually take the executable and add it to your path. So your path is pretty much your way of telling Windows, hey, Whenever I type in a command and you don't recognize it, first look through my current directory, whatever directory I'm currently in. If you can't find it, then go ahead and look through all of these directories that I give you in my path. So this path variable is a bunch of different 
paths, file paths, separated with semicolons. So then it's going to go through and look through each one of these for a program called T Shark. So I'm just going to type in T Shark, and again, whenever I do this, it's going to look through my current directory, not find it, and it's start going to, it's going to start looking through my path. Now, since there is a path, C program files Wireshark is my last one, then it's going to work just fine, just like before. So CLS, clear out of there. So again, anytime you want to be able to run an executable from anywhere on your computer, add it to your system path. Now later on, I'm going to show you guys how to add paths to your variable through the command line. But for now, I want to show you guys just how to do it through your GUI environment. So whenever you need to add a path to your variable, then what you do is if you write start and you right click on computer and hit properties, you can go ahead and click on advanced system settings and environment variables. So here you're going to see a variable for path. And if you edit this, then you can type in all the paths where you want windows to look whenever you type in a command. So since I have Wireshark right in there, that's why I was able to type T Shark from anywhere on my command line and it knew to look right here. So pretty cool. And I think we're kind of running out of time for this tutorial. But in the next tutorial, I have no idea what I'm going to cover. Hopefully you guys learned something in this one. If not, well, I don't know what to tell you. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you next time.